and if there's something two places to the right of the decimal, it's going to be worth 1 over 256, etc. Base 2, same idea. Might as well put these out here because we're going to be looking at these. So um, this would be worth 1, this would be worth 2, this would be worth 4, this would be worth 8. Uh, something in this spot would be worth a half and something in this spot would be worth a quarter. Okay, so let's look at the number that we want to work with, which is 925.75, and this is um, base 10. So I'll just put a little 10 here for base 10. So the first thing we want to do is convert it to hexadecimal. So what you want to do is you want to start with the biggest possible place value, which in this case is 256. That will go into 925. If we went to the next place value, 16 to the third power, let's see what that is. 16 to the third power is 4,096. So if something was in this spot right here, it would be worth 4,000. 4, 4,096. Well, this number, 925, is less than 4,096, so there's not going to be anything in this place. So this is going to be our first place, 256. So we want to ask ourselves how many 256s will go into 925. Um, so let's try 256 times 3. That would be 768. So I'm going to put a 3 here, and then I'm going to subtract off 768, because this 3 in this place is worth 3 times 256, which is 768, and I'll subtract that off, and that's going to leave me 157. So what I have left should definitely be less than 256, otherwise I could fit another 256 in there, okay? And then we go to the next place value, which is 16, so how many 16s will go into 157? Well, 16 times 10 is 160, so it's probably going to be 9. So well, let's use red for our answer. So 9, 16s will go in there. So i got to figure out 9 times 16, that's 144. So I'm going to subtract off 144, and that leaves me with 13. So 13 is what's going to go in this spot right here. Remember, base 16 uses the digits 1 through 9. And then once you get to 10, you know, 1 is the same as 1, 2 is the same as 2, etc. And once you get to 10, uh, A is equivalent to 10, B is equivalent to 11, C is 12, uh, D is 13, E is 14, and F is 15. And that's as far as you go. So this is, this is base 16, and this is base 10 over here, equivalence. We have 13 left, base 10, so that's equivalent to D, so we have to put a D here like that. So 39D is what we have so far. Okay, we haven't dealt with the 0.75. We're going to kind of look at that separately, but we've got the 925, and that's equivalent to 39D in hexadecimal. All right, so let's look at the um, fractional part of this. We'll get rid of that for right now. 0.75 in base 10 means 75 one hundredths. But what we want to do is we want to think about how many sixteenths that might be because this spot right here is worth a sixteenth. How many sixteenths? So if we reduce 75 over 100, base 10, we come up with 3 fourths. But again, we want to know how many sixteenths that is. So we could certainly convert that to sixteenths by multiplying by 4 and we get 12 sixteenths. So remember what I just had up there a second ago before I erased it. A was 10, B was 11, and C was 12. So I want C sixteenths. C is representing my 12, 12 sixteenths. So 0.75 base 10 is 75 one hundredths, but if I want to convert it to hex, I got to figure out how many sixteenths that is, and it's twelve sixteenths, but I'm not going to put a little twelve here. I'm not going to do that. You can only have one character in that spot, and that's why we go to letters here to represent these characters, or these uh, values that use more than one character, base 10. Okay, so there we have it. Um, 925.75 is equal to 390.C, base 16. 
Okay, so now let's take this 390 point C and convert it to binary. Now, when you do that, there's a really easy way to do that. And um, what you should do is generate a chart. We can go ahead and do that. You could look this up online, but it's it's not too bad. What you want to do is generate a chart that goes uh, hexadecimal to binary, just character by character, or or value by value, I should say. So if we had um, one hexadecimal, that would just be one binary. Let me put these binary values out here again, just to the left of the decimal, because we might need to remember that. So we have um, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1st, which is 2, 2 to the 2nd, which is 4, 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. Let me erase this and put a 1 here. That's 2 to the 0. Okay. So when we go to 2 hexadecimal, in binary, a 2, we would want um, something in this spot right here. So in binary, we need a 1, 0. So that's 2, because this place right here is worth 2, and this place is, is worth nothing, so that just gives us 2. Okay, then we go to 3, so we need 1, 2, and 1, 1. You get that? There'd be a 1 here that's worth 2, and a 1 here that's worth 1. That would give us 3. Okay, 4, we would need 1, 4, and then that's all we'd need, so it'd be 1, 0, 0. A 5, we would need a 4 and no 2s and a 1, that would give us 5. A 6, we need a 4 plus a 2, and that's it. I'm running out of room here. I want to go all the way to the end here, um, at least through all the, the hexadecimal characters. So 7, um, I need a 4, a 2, and a 1. 8 is an 8 and then nothing else. I should write those binary ones down somewhere so we have them in our head. So we got 1, 2, 4, 8. And that we're not going to need a 16 because if we're, when we do all the hex characters, it's only going to go up to 15. So we're not going to need a 16. Um, 9. This would be good practice to pause this and fill this out if you haven't done this before. We need an 8 and a 1. Let me erase this part over here. 10. We would need um, an 8 and a 2. 11. We would need an 8, a 2, and a 1. Now remember, 10 is actually going to be an A in hex. And 11 is going to be a B. So C is 12. So we'd need an 8 and a 4. Uh, D is like 13, so we would need um, an 8 and a 4, that's 12, and then one more for 13. E would be 14, so we would need an 8 and a 4 would be 12 and 13, 14, 8, 4, and 2, that'd do it. F is 15, which is going to be one of each. Now if we um, think of all these as four digits, we could put zeros in front of these ones here that weren't four digits. So you get kind of a four digit code, a four digit binary code for every hexadecimal character. Now once you have these, it makes it very easy to convert from hexadecimal to binary. Let me erase these and let's put the number that we started with in uh, base 10 up here, 925.75. So I can erase that here. And then we'll go to our binary. So what you do to go from hexadecimal to binary is you take your hex number 3, 9, D, point, C, and you just substitute in these four digit um, equivalencies for each character. So 3 in hex is 0011. So in binary, I would write 0011. 9 is 1001. Uh, D is 1101. Point C is 1100. And there you have it.
there's the binary equivalent going from hex to binary so that makes it really easy I mean you could go from base 10 to binary figuring out this is 900 so you'd have to you know you'd have to go with your place values a lot further than 8 your binary place values 1 2 4 8 16 32 I'd have to keep going until I have something that's bigger than 900 so it would take a few more place values what 64 128 uh, 256, 512, that would be it. So that would take you away. Actually, you could, you could see it right here. This would be uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, um, 128, 256, and 512. That's as far as you'd get. So if you have 1, 512, and 1, 256, and 1, 128, and no 64s, and no 32s, and 116, and 18, and 14, and no 2s, and 11, and added all those up, you should get 925. And then this 1 is actually worth a half, and this 1 is worth 1 over 2 to the second, which is a fourth. And if you add a half and a fourth, you get three quarters, which is the same as 0.75. So you certainly could go from um, decimal straight to binary. But once you have all this red business here, it is a pretty easy path to go from hexadecimal to binary, just substituting in these four-digit uh, equivalencies. So I hope that helps, and um, just remember, if you set up these place values, that can kind of help you do the addition. And you certainly don't have to memorize all these four-digit uh, equivalencies from binary to hex. You could, as long as you feel like you could generate them.